told you we're not done yet. Hey guys, this is Bill. After a near two month layoff with the Nintendo Super Power Club Challenge Channel, or NSPC for short, and this is The Legend of Zelda on NES. And this is challenge number 85 and challenge 150. Yep, two challenges at the same time in one video, never done before. How is that possible? Well, if you think back, I've been saying for several years now that Nintendo released several games in this collection that had two separate challenges and two separate trading cards. We already knocked out one of them earlier this year in Super Mario Bros. 3, and now we're tackling the second one in one clean shot. So, we're going to go ahead and look at both trading cards individually, and then we're going to talk about what's necessary to get both of them done at the same time. So let's go ahead and do that. Right now you're looking at the front of card number 85, so check that out really quick. Now let's go ahead and flip over to the front side of card 150, so you can see they are in fact two different cards with two different faces. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at the challenge on the back of card number 85. Remember only to focus on the pro level challenge, there you are. And now let's flip over to the back side of card number 150. And now you can see the Pro Challenge down there. Alright, now we know what we're looking at. Now, let's imagine combining these two and talking about them. Now, just for the sake of making this easy for myself, I've put both challenges up on the screen at the same time, so I don't have to constantly flip between the two while talking about them. So, beating Ganon with the Green Mail, the White Sword, and no more than 8 hearts. Yeah, I could have very easily done this challenge separately and made two videos, but what would the fun in that be, right? That's just me. So, how's it going to work out? Honestly, it's business as usual up until the latter part of the game. Dungeon 8, and especially Dungeon number 9, with some of those dreaded whiz robes, and especially the Ganon fight. It's not going to be easy, you will curse the game, and if you're using a controller, you will be throwing it against the wall. Good luck with this one. I don't know how I managed to pull this off, and I don't know how many times I had to go through the final dungeon before finally completing it. The funny thing is, I actually did complete this challenge about five years ago when I first began this channel, but I only recorded the Ganon fight. The reason I didn't upload it? I wanted to show the entire ninth dungeon to show some semblance of skill here. So, with that being said, we are finally going to go ahead and post both of these challenges at the same time. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. And here we go. Okay, right out of the start, you can see we have eight hearts, and we do have one game save, although that was intentional on purpose, because I wanted to show that I have actually completed the ninth dungeon, so one thing I did to make it a little simpler was actually clear out a lot of that dungeon before going into it for real this time. And you're going to see that as we go up here. Uh, the one thing you're also going to see, we've only got three to four hearts to start this, and we're going to have to obviously go in there with full life because with only green mail, you're going to take a lot of damage and it's going to hurt pretty bad, right? So, how do you get full life? Well, there's a few ways. You could farm en enemies the old-fashioned way or you could do what I just did. Find a fairy in the heart pond. There's a couple around here if I'm not mistaken. And go ahead and fill your life up and continue on through. And if we know anything about the first quest, we know that Dungeon 9 is in the upper top left quadrant on both quests, actually. But for the first one, we got to head up. There's a few ways you can get up there. I prefer to go through the Lost Woods. And as you get here, anyone who's ever played this game knows very well that you must go up left, down left. Or as they say in-game, go north, west, southwest. Either way is going to get you through the Lost Woods and over to the next part of the game over to the harder enemies, and eventually the graveyard area, which we're going to see right up here. Just keep on moving, 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 and make your way up north toward level 9 Death Mountain. And this is pretty much all you're going to see for the entirety of here through level 9. It's nothing you don't know already. I'm just going to go ahead and skip right past this, and we will see you at the entrance to Death Mountain. Okay, as we come out of hyperspeed here, make sure you are at full life. If for some reason you are not, you can go past the Death Mountain over to the left, and there is a cave with a medicine shop right inside. Fill yourself up if you need to. 
All right, headed into Death Mountain. Here we go. We move on up, obviously, and assuming you've got the full Triforce, you can go up. But before we do that, let's look at our items here. The Magic Wand will be critical and crucial for some of these areas to light the path and kill far distant enemies. Make sure you got it ready to go. Next to that, of course, you have the Life Medicine. Make sure you've got red. You will need it with only eight life and a green mail. Trust me on this. You do absolutely need it. Moving on up, obviously you can't beat Ganon without the Silver Arrows. And most importantly, underrated I think are the bombs. There will be several rooms in this dungeon where bombs will be crucial. And you will need them to get through with only a white sword. We'll show you where we talk about. Alright, moving on up. Oh, also by the way, notice the map. It's already pre-filled out. And the reason why is because I played a run through of this on Dungeon 9, and I got up to the room before Ganon and purposely lost so that I would know where to go, and I also cleared out a lot of the enemies beforehand. So you're going to see there are some rooms that don't have enemies where they probably should. By the way, blew the hole through the walls too, just for reference. So go over here through to the left. Fire Wand, Magic Wand, absolutely beautiful here. Absolutely destroys the enemies and burns them on fire. Yes, you could use the sword, but trust me, use the wand. A lot easier. All right, moving on through, obviously take out the bats, don't take any stupid hits here. Keep on moving, moving, easy stuff. We're gonna come out of this little ladder cave section into a room full of like-likes. Use your sword or your magic wand, it does not matter, just be careful, do not let them get on top of you or they will take your shield away. And there's no way to get one back this late into the game unless you leave the cave and go buy one again, so don't waste your time. You don't have to kill them all necessarily, but you do want to take the right exit out of this room to get to the next part of this dungeon and continue moving toward Ganon. Alright, we're just going to do that. So we move through, this room is dark, use the magic wand if you want to, I'm just showing you for reference. You don't have to do that, but just keep moving over to the right, you'll get through that room no problem. This room is annoying, the Patra enemy. You could try to attack him, but it's not worth it, you'll take some heart damage, don't do it, just sneak around him when it's safe. Yeah. Alright, get to an old man here. If you're playing for the first time, you won't notice where that wall is, so bomb a hole in it. Go on through. This room right here, you do want bombs. Now, could you get through without them? Normally, yes, but in a playthrough where you have eight hearts and only green mail, the bomb will help you with getting rid of some of these whiz robes, especially the pesky blue ones who move around in annoying fashion. The orange ones, believe it or not, I think are even more annoying because, for whatever reason, the screen flickers depending on where and how you played or what version of the game you have. And it is very nice to just get rid of them quickly. Promise you. All right, once you get rid of the blue whiz robes, you will be able to leave this room and you will move on to the next section. I got very lucky there. Usually, most times I have to burn one of my uh, potions there and get it down to blue. Very thankful that didn't happen here, but we're gonna continue moving on through. And I would say try to have three to four bombs left for the rest of this dungeon here if possible. Thankfully, we're in a good spot. Just a bunch of bots here. Continue to use the sword. Get rid of them carefully. Easy stuff. And we're going to move over to the left, just in case you have never played this before. Room full of bats. Easy stuff. Continue moving over left. Kill them if you wish. If you're low on life, it might be useful to try to get a heart or a fairy. I'm only down one heart, but it's not that big of a deal at this point. Get the last one, maybe. You hold still, there we go. Alright, through this door. We're gonna have a room with nothing in it. You do not need to take that staircase, just head up to the north. This is a very tricky room full of like-likes. Uh, you gotta be very careful. I recommend staying over to the left-hand quadrant corner right there. And just burning them all with fire right there. You do not need to kill all of them, just make sure that you leave the room to the north. Here, you could use the wand, it's not necessary. Do what you gotta do, just make sure you move up to the north. You do not need to kill all of these like-likes once again, just head on north, watch out for these spike traps here. Here, once again, very difficult room, you do not need to kill the enemies, just bomb a hole in the left and continue through. This is a room where you do want bombs, particularly for the annoying blue ones. Uh, the orange ones, kill with your sword if you can. If not, usually what I recommend is dropping a bomb right in the middle there. And look at that, we got a bomb pickup, that was kind of nice and <laughs> very essential to have. We've gotten rid of the orange whiz robes, so get rid of the blue ones ooh, very carefully. And this room is made even worse by the fact that you have those corner spike traps there. So you need to stay in the middle and away from the walls or you're going to take even more additional damage here. So be very careful. I have my red potion on tap and we're going to go ahead and burn it right now, drop it down to blue. 
Back up to full life, thankfully, and that's usually where I have to burn a potion in one of these two Wiz Rogue rooms. So we're through that. Unfortunately, took another hit there. Get the spike trap out of the way, go down in the hole, come back around, and we are through the thick of it. I believe we have one more difficult, tricky room section to go through before the Ganon boss fight here. And if we can get through that, obviously, the worst of it is behind us, I believe. Here, we're going to come out. This is another tricky section. Again, you don't have to kill these enemies. All you need to do is bomb a hole in the wall. Thankfully, I've already done that previously. And we can just blitz through that room. All right, this section right here, this is a room that is right before the final boss. You do not need to worry too much. As long as we don't have whiz robes, we're in pretty good shape. Those annoying flickering enemies, whatever they're called, even if they hit you, it's not a big deal because they don't cause any physical damage. They just essentially numb or paralyze you so you can't use the sword attack. You can still use the wand, so whatever, just ignore them. All right, down through. Normally, you would have a Patra enemy here. Thankfully, we took it out previously, or this would be a very annoying, ugly room you would need to use bombs for. Thankfully, not a problem. Gather yourself, take a few deep breaths, go on up, and here we go. This is the Ganon boss fight with only green mail and white sword. Now, thankfully, there is a way to cheese this room. Make sure you are in full health, because if you touch Ganon even one time, it could be the end of you. Get right over there and swing away. Swing, swing, swing. Eventually, you will get a hit on him. When it happens, you need to swing the sword like this in a very rhythmic pattern, just like that. Eventually, after eight hits, he'll turn brown, drop the silver arrow into him, boom, he's a cloud of dust and blood. There's a Triforce. Pick it up. Only one thing left to do. Go through that north door up top. And there we go, Room of Fire with Zelda in a green dress like you've probably never seen her before. And congratulations, we have just beaten this game, and we've beaten not one, but two pro-level challenges here. So, that puts challenges number 85 and 150 in the books, and I believe that is 83 of the 170 challenges fully completed, which puts us very damn close to 50% of the entire collection over and done with. Can't believe we've gotten this far. Can't believe I've gotten these challenges out of the way after so many years. But that's where we're at. Uh, thank you guys so much, as usual, for sticking around with me. I assure you, we have more games and more challenges to come. Lemmings is probably up next, if I'm not mistaken. We are going to look at Lolo 3. So a couple puzzle games coming up next on the horizon. But this one's overdone with and in the books. As always, thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next challenge. Take care.